Welcome to the Power to Change today. I'm Gregory Dickow and something good is about to happen in your life today. You know, we live in a world that is full of pain, worry, and fear. And in spite of all of our advancements in technology and medicine and education, fear still grips mankind with financial worry, wars, rumors of wars, terrorism, the threat of diseases and plagues, and so much more. And if you're like me, you're sick and tired of being afraid. You're tired of being held back by your past, by your pain, and living in the valley of the shadow of death. Maybe you've even prayed and things have gotten worse. You've tried to move forward and you've fallen back. But don't let that scare you because just when it seems like your mistakes or problems at your job, sickness in your body, or people that are against you seem to be setting you backwards, it's really setting you up for the greatest comeback of your life. You're about to bounce back from whatever has come against you. And I want to take you step by step into this fearless life that God created you for. How to become invincible in a worry-filled, fear-filled world. So get your Bible, your notebook, and get ready to be fearless. I don't care about all the weapons. I don't care about the devil's plan because God's plan is better. I don't care about the devil's weapons because God's weapons are mightier. I don't care about the devil's intention and the devil, what the devil comes to do because what God has already done is greater than what the devil has done or what the devil's trying to do. Amen. Amen. Who cares? I mean, I, once again, to illustrate this, I will draw upon the most sophisticated examples that I can to help relate to everybody. But have you ever seen the episode in Bugs Bunny? when all these weapons are all of a sudden pointed, and I, don't know, and I don't remember who it is, whether it's Elmer Fudd or Daffy Duck or one of them, all these weapons, or maybe it's Bugs himself, all these weapons are formed against him. So he's got cannons, and he's got rifles, and he's got guns, and he's got machetes, and he's got arrows, and they all come against him, and they stop, and it's like you see all these weapons stopped in midair, and they do not hit the target. How many remember that episode or know what I'm talking about? All right, now I really know I'm in the right church. And we have now discovered the intelligent quotient in this church has reached levels unimaginable. The Bugs Bunny level, that's when you're really living. Now listen. I see vividly this picture of, of all of these, these, these weapons that are against him and they stop in midair and the picture freezes and that's exactly what our lives are like it doesn't matter what cannon is pointed at you it doesn't matter what arrow is pointed at you it doesn't matter what machete is pointed at you it doesn't matter what rifle or what gun is pointed at you because none of those weapons shall prosper they can be pointed at you they can have your name inscribed on their medal but they cannot prosper they cannot succeed they cannot defeat you because God says no weapon formed against his children will prosper and the moment you believe and the moment you stop focusing on trying to get rid of all the enemy's weapons, trying to rid his factory of all of his weapons, the moment you stop worrying about all that is the moment that those weapons have no more power over you. The moment I stop trying to get rid of fear, this is my point, the moment I stop getting rid of fear and realize that fear has no power over me because of God's great love for me. Perfect love casts out fear. So I don't have to be yelling at fear. The moment I start yelling at fear is the moment that fear knows it's got me. We have been using our faith and our energy and our words to try to get rid of things that scare us. And we got to stop trying to get rid of the things that scare us and start realizing that the things that scare us don't have any power over us. Amen. And that's why they're trying to scare us. Because if they really had power over us, they wouldn't scare us, they would just kill us. 
but they couldn't kill you, so they try to scare you. And when you're no longer scared because you no longer can be killed because you're already dead in Christ and alive with him, you become fearless. No weapon will be formed against you. Don't you wish it said that? It doesn't say that. Hallelujah, no weapon will be formed against me. No weapon will be formed against me. That's fantasy land. The plane, the plane. That's not. <laughs> now I know how old you guys are. Because that's old school, man. Fantasy island. Tattoo. Look, boss. We got to stop living in some fake world where we're trying to tiptoe through life so that no weapon will be formed against us. We're trying to not make the devil mad so that no weapon will be formed against you. The weapons are already formed against you. We got to stop trying to make a deal with the devil. Oh, if I stop speaking the word, maybe the devil will leave me alone. No, it was speaking the word that caused the devil to leave Jesus alone. It wasn't, well, if I stop, if I stop giving, then maybe the de you know, devil stopped stealing from me. He's already stealing from you, and he's stealing from you by getting you to think if you stop giving, he'll stop stealing from you. If you can follow that logic, hope, get the CD or whatever. You can listen to that over again. God will speak to you. Listen, the only thing that fear does in our lives is it stops our progress. It makes you a slave to its imagination. It makes you faint and give up and quit. But it's, though it's not a mirage, the fear is real, but it's power, whatever it's selling, doesn't have the power to prosper against you. And as soon as you embrace that reality, that fear loses its power and you live fearlessly in the midst of a fearful world. And you live fearlessly in the midst of a painful world. And you're no longer afraid of the pain because you know prayer will catapult you beyond the pain. You're no, long, you're no longer afraid of the bad news from a doctor because you know that God's love and that you know that prayer and the word of God and the faith of Jesus and the love of God will catapult you beyond the bad report and turn the bad report into a good report. Amen. Listen, suppose I wanted to convince you that you are physically invincible, that, that you cannot be hurt by anything that happens in life. Suppose I wanted to try to convince you of that. Now, don't get me wrong. We are invincible spiritually. But look, you can't jump off a cliff and say I'm invincible physically. But suppose I could convince you or I wanted to convince you that you are physically invincible. How would I accomplish that? Well, I could hire a squad of bodyguards to protect you everywhere you go. But what will happen? Well... Whenever they're there, you'll feel good because you see your bodyguards around you. But the moment those bodyguards aren't there, you will panic the first time you get into trouble because what you have become dependent upon no longer exists. And this is what God is trying to get across to us is we've been dependent upon calm and peace and we've, been, we've become dependent on things being good in our life and nothing going wrong in our life rather than being dependent upon God knowing that no weapon formed against me can prosper. We have tried to find our peace from no weapon being formed against us. But we're not going to find our peace from no weapon being formed against us. We're going to find our peace from knowing that no weapon formed against us can prosper. We've been trying to find our peace by getting everybody to like us. But we're not going to find our peace by getting everybody to like us. We're going to find our peace when we realize it doesn't matter whether they like us or not. 
We're here to be pleasing to God. And if that's not popular with some people, that's okay. We're not going to try to offend them intentionally. But if they get offended, it's not our job to unoffend them. It's not our job to apologize for trusting God. It's not our job to apologize for not caring what they think. Are you with me still? You'd become so dependent on that bodyguard, that, that squad of bodyguards that I, that I put around you that you'd panic the moment that they're not around. We've been putting our confidence in the wrong thing, is my point. But God doesn't want us to be pushed around by devils, by demons, by life, by troubles, by trials, by challenges. He wants us to be able to stand in the face of their best ammunition and be able to laugh in their face. He wants us to look at life knowing that all these weapons are pointed at us and he wants us to be able to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. He wants us to, to know that no matter what enemies are against us, no matter what things have come so close to our face that we could almost feel them in our flesh that we can eat from the table that he has set before us in the presence of our enemies. Getting rid of all these weapons is not our responsibility and not our job and it's not something we need to even be worried about because no, none of them can prosper. Amen. And the moment you believe that, these weapons don't have any power over you. What are you afraid of right now? I want you to realize, yes, that thing you're afraid of is pointed at you. That thing that you're afraid of was designed to destroy you. It's okay to accept that fact. But the truth that's even greater than the fact says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Uh, the reason I like this verse so much is because it doesn't, there's no ambiguity in this verse. There's, there's no there's no uncertainty. It doesn't say, you know, aren't you glad doesn't, God doesn't say in Isaiah 54, 17, you know, once in a while, no weapons formed against you is going to prosper. You know, some weapons are going to get through and some aren't. Praise God it doesn't say that. It says no weapon. Say that, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Weapons will be formed against me. Say that. Say, weapons will be formed against me. They are formed against me right now. They have my name written on them. They are designed by hell to destroy me, but none of them shall prosper because I am the righteousness of God. I am a child of God. I am not in bondage to those things. I have God as my Father. I am not afraid because perfect love casts out fear and God has perfect love towards me. Somehow, some way, he is going to deliver me. Amen. This is how to live, folks. This is how to live. Listen. God wants us to feel the fear, but not be moved by it. And I learned this the other day because my, my little boy, we were just, I don't know, I don't remember what we were doing, but all of a sudden he just out of nowhere said, it's okay to be scared, Dad. <laughs> and I got really religious at first. Hey, no, we're not afraid of anything in Jesus' name. Don't talk like that and blah, blah, blah. He said, it's okay to be scared. And then, he, and then he's like, why are you mad at me, Dad? <laughs> and as I've been thinking about this, I've come to realize, really, it's not trying to get rid of the feelings of fear. That's the goal. The goal is go ahead and feel it and know that it has no power to prosper against you. 
Because once you feel it and it can't prosper, it will never, ever have power over you again. But most of us are trying to, we're, we're, we're trying to avoid ever feeling it. But what God wants us to do is live beyond it. So if I want to convince you that you're invincible, I'm not going to surround you with bodyguards that give you the false sense of security. If I want you to feel invincible, then maybe I will let you go into a fiery furnace. with two of your buddies, so there's three of you there. But I'll be the fourth man in the fire with you so that not one hair on your head will be singed. If I really wanted to convince you that you're invincible, I wouldn't try to order your life so that you're never in a lion's den, I will just give you the power to shut the mouth of the lions. If I really want to convince you that you're invincible, and this is what God is do, trying to do for you, if I really want to convince you that you're invincible, I will let your brothers throw you in a pit. I'm not, I'm not sending you into a pit. I'm not sending you into the furnace. I'm not sending you into the lion's den. But stuff happens according to the bumper sticker. <laughs> Life happens. I'm not throwing you in there, but I don't mind you being thrown in there because I will not allow it to destroy you. It shall not prosper. So I don't mind your brothers. I don't want them to throw you in the pit, but they're going to sometimes. And listen to what God is saying. And my goal is not just to get you out of the pit. Because if I get you, if I just, if all, my, if all I accomplish in your life is to get you out of the pit, then guess what? All you have is a nice little story. Oh, my brothers threw me in the pit, and then they threw the rope down, and then I got out of the pit. Hallelujah. And God's goal is not just to get you out of the pit, but, and, but then Joseph gets sold into slavery to the Ishmael, by the Ishmaelites into Egypt, and now he's in Potiphar's house as a slave. And he serves there, and God blesses everything he puts his hand to. But not so that Joseph can get out of Potiphar's house because so often we're just trying to get out of our problem rather than take the sting out of our problem by not being afraid of it anymore, by embracing the fear. And I don't mean go ahead and, I'm not saying invite fear to come into your life. What I'm saying is don't think that you're betraying God because you felt afraid. When you feel the fear but trust God anyway, now you have power over the fear and you can live life fearlessly in the face of all opposition. So God allows Joseph to be thrown into a pit by his brothers. That's not God's will, but that's what happened. And then he allows him to be sold into slavery. It's not God's will, but that's what happens. Then he allows him to be falsely accused. That wasn't God's will, but that's what people did to him. And then allows him to be cast into the prison of Pharaoh, which wasn't God's will. But when you believe in the bigness of God, greater than the bigness of your problem, then you will go into any pit that life throws you in and you will know that God somehow will bring you out. And you can walk through anything that you've been in bondage to knowing that God will set you free. And you can, be, you can let anybody accuse you of anything falsely knowing that God will deliver you out of whatever they say about you. And you can let anything that bad happened in your life be turned into a promotion from God when you trust that God is bigger than the pit, 
God is bigger than, the, than, than Potiphar. God is bigger than Potiphar's wife. God is bigger than Pharaoh and the prison that Pharaoh enslaved him in. God is bigger than that. And what you meant for evil, God says, I will turn it into good. There is no way to measure how amazing and how worthwhile it is to live fearlessly. And so when stuff happens in your life, don't worry about it. Don't be afraid of it. It shall not prosper. We live in the most fearful time in all our lives. The Bible never said that weapons wouldn't form against us. It did say, however, that they wouldn't prosper. It is time for us to live a life free of fear. The presence of evil does not dictate our future. We will fear no evil and walk through it. Even if we're not faithful, God never leaves us or turns against us. He's always faithful to keep His promise. When we focus on God's faithfulness, it's His love that drives out fear. We are free to live in abundance and experience life to the fullest without fear. For your love gift of $30, you'll receive this three-disc CD series, Fearless Living, and the mini book, Fearless. These products will impact your life and cause you to stand strong in the face of whatever the enemy brings your way. When you call today, you'll also receive the Cure of Anxiety DVD and Peace Instrumental CD with accompanying scripture reading by Pastor Dickow, all for your love gift of just $30. Your seed to this ministry not only benefits you as you defeat a fear-filled life, but it also directly impacts the lives of millions all around the world as your seed allows us to feed, clothe, and bring hope to a world lost without Jesus. Fearless Living, a mini book Fearless, The Cure of Anxiety, and the Peace Instrumental CD with scriptures read by Pastor Gregory Dickow for your love gift of $30. Call now. Remind yourself that God has destined you to live a fearless life. Don't wait. Call now. Well, whatever's staring you in the face right now trying to destroy you will not succeed. You know, the truth is, is that weapons will be formed against us, but no weapon formed against us will prosper. The thing I love about that verse is there's no uncertainty about it, is there? Aren't you glad it doesn't say some weapons are going to get through and prosper? No, it says no weapon is going to prosper. They're formed against us, but as the Bible says, we're going to face evil. But as David said, we'll walk through the valley. We don't have to stay there. and We don't have to be afraid of the valley because the Lord is with us. You know, it's funny, the other day, my little boy, he looked at me and he said, it's okay to be scared, Dad. And I thought about that because in a way he was right. It's okay to feel fear without it controlling you because once you feel it and know that it can't prosper, it'll never have power over you again. Well, God has given me several more special things that I want to share with you to equip you to live a completely and utterly free fear life. And I'll share those in a moment. But I want you to know that when you sow into this ministry, you're impacting the lives of people all around the world. Not only are you receiving the gospel for your life, but your seed is helping us reach people with the love of God like never before. I want you to listen to this powerful testimony for a moment that you're making possible through your seed and through your giving. Watch this. I had a lot of baggage from my past, my childhood. From my mom, it was just just brutal physical abuse. I was always living with bruises and bumps and, you know, cuts on my body. You know, I always felt like I had to rush to do everything. My mom was just, you know, you know, get it done, get it done, get it right. And if you don't, you know, just living in fear and having to do everything fast, it snowballed. pastor asked if anybody wanted to receive the free gift of salvation. I actually thought it was a free gift. I was kidding. I had no idea. So we went up to the altar and, you know, and then he said this prayer. I was thinking like, what kind of place is this? You know, everybody cannot be this nice in life, in, in the world, in a building. There were too many nice people in one place. I, I did not know what to do with myself. And I, you know, I was listening to every word of the prayer, but it was when I had turned around to go back to my seat, there was a gentleman who gave me a big hug and he said, welcome to the family. That word family 
oh my gosh, you know, my own family has never welcomed me to the family. I had to come back the next week, the next week. I still didn't know what it was for. I, I had no idea I was hungry for God. The Word of God, it's alive, it has a pulse, and you have to let it be the heartbeat of your life. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you that fear does not have control over my friends, my brothers, and my sisters watching right now. Lord, I thank you that you've not given them the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Give them hope today that everything is turning around in their favor, in Jesus' name, amen. Now remember, God loves you so much and so do I, and don't miss our next broadcast. I can't wait to see you then. God bless. Fearless Living, a mini book, Fearless, The Cure of Anxiety, and the Peace Instrumental CD with scriptures read by Pastor Gregory Dickow for your love gift of $30. Call now. Remind yourself that God has destined you to live a fearless life. Don't wait. Call now. Introducing the NIV Live Complete Audio Bible Presentation. I say repent! It's a cinematic production. Go! The Lord will watch over us! Go now! 79 audio CDs, up to six complete mobile and digital downloads, the behind the scenes making of NIV Live DVD and the online web application scripture study version. This special offer for your love gift of $75. Holidays are approaching, get yours today. It's time to receive the power you need in life to win. Join Gregory Dickow for the power to change today. Connect to the power of God with each and every program as Pastor Dickow shares biblical insight and revelation to shift your thinking and change your world. Tap into the power, tap into the anointing, tap into the Word on The Power to Change Today with Gregory Dickow, each week right here on this station.